am pissing you off, aren't I? I'm so sorry. The first thing we have to do to any successful operation is to get super caffeinated. Ray's Frank and Sour. I hope they change the can so that they will run this all year long. Wah! Thank you. That's, that's the payoff right there. Ah, so that good. is really good. So this morning, we're going to turn the ringers off the telephones. <laughs> hey, um, let's do that thing that they're doing on TikTok right now. Bark at your dog. Who is that good doggy, 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 doggy? Roo! <laughs> He's like, what? We have a lot planned for today. Uh, all of you apprentice falconers out there and some master falconers, I'm going to learn something new today. You're going to learn something new too. We have Ashley Roth in the house. Hey, Ashley. Hi. Not only is she a local master falconer in the Imperial, Missouri area, but also she is a noon team member here at Wildlife Command Center. So we're super happy about that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That was crowd noise. Yeah, I, I did it for you too. Oh, thanks. Ashley is going to teach me how to make a removable anklet. We have George, who is a six-year-old Harris Hawk, or he's been intermewed six times, and he has some raggedy equipment on it, and the person that put that raggedy equipment on it, shame on you. So let's get to it. Let's dig in. I love the British say. Um, let's dip in. Let's dip in. Let's dip in. That's what they say? Yeah. How long have you done falconry? I've done falconry for 13 years. 13 years? For 13 years, oh yes. Oh my God. I started when I was 16 years old. That's a teenager now. Yeah, when I was 12, I told my mom I was going to get a hawk, and she laughed, and, and I laughed like, haha, yeah, I am. And uh, whenever I could drive, I knew when I got a car, that's what I was going to do, and I did it. So I have some kangaroo belly hide. Hole, hole punch, I don't know if you need that. And actual leather scissors. Beautiful. You like see. make hoods too though, right? I do, I do make hoods. So this is a hood that I'm working on for a Merlin. It's called a micro hood. Micro falconry, whenever you fly a bird that is micro. Merlin like the wizard? <laughs> Merlin like the wizard, a lot more fun than flying a Merlin. <laughs> and then we have grommets. Are those 5 16 inch grommets? I don't know. Perfect. They're the size. Yes, they that, are. That That's I five sixteenths. Okay. That's what I use as well. Let me see. I think I have some black ones. What's this kit like? Does this come like this? This came like this. It's a hole punch kit that I got off of Amazon. Okay. So I'm gonna use this one to make the little thing of a bob. Thing, yeah, the thing. Whenever I make the anklet, I'll put a little hole on each side, so that way, whenever the anklet goes back through itself it will lock into place. I don't have four, I only have three black grommets. So we're gonna use one odd. Okay. And that way we're gonna know that it's my bird. Actually, we're gonna use two odd. That way it'll be symmetrically odd. Symmetrically. It's unmatched. like our gang colors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's got a smooth side, which is a finished side. That's the side that they tan the, um, the, the this is vegetable hand and then it has a rough side and this is the rough side is it like the inner and outer side of the skin yep so the fat was on this side the fur was on this side but it's kangaroo so it was very very lean animal but still there's some fat tyson oh no yep that's uh tyson's uncle bebop oh no would you happen to be in search of a pen right now mm -hmm. their leg is like about as big around as a battery or your pinky let's go so see batteries I'm, uh, I'm gonna go see real quick. Charles is always distracting. I think I think so George's cute. leg is this big around. Okay. I'm gonna go see. You barely seem nervous whatsoever. No, not nervous at all. Completely unnatural. I, I, yes, I told you I didn't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> it's gonna be so exciting. I get to be on YouTube. She said go hawk trapping with Michael and Cole. It'll be fine. What could go wrong? <laughs> well, what, yes, and what a, a slippery slope it has become. <laughs> I'm just getting fully immersed into the Wildlife Command Center world. <laughs> well, I'll take that and put it over and just kind of get an idea for how 
big the grommet needs the, the the anklet. How big the anklet needs to be? Words. I can't. Yeah, I can't control how big the grommet is because it's already the size that it is. So let's see, like right there and right there, and then I'm gonna look. Somebody there. asked me what I'm doing. What are you doing, Michael? I'm making plectum so we can put a tail bell on the birds. Cool. I definitely know what that is. I it's, don't. <laughs> it's like it's like a little plastic shelf that the um, that the bell will sit on on top of the deck feathers. You know what the deck feathers are? Uh, the tail feathers. Yep. Deck feathers oh, are tail it. feathers. I used to have a little device that would that would cut these out. These it's a it's a little device that uh, musicians use, and it's a it's like a die cast cutter. And that way you can cut uh, guitar picks. Yeah, that's what they look like. Out to the perfect size. Sorry, I'm so quiet. You're fine. Sorry, I keep saying sorry. How about that? Sorry, Michael. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Why, why did I hire you if you're such a sorry person? Oh my gosh. Because eventually I, I, I won't be sorry anymore. And you'll be like, oh, okay, it's just, she's normal. She's not sorry all the time. Just most of the time. Do you want to tell people about our master plan here, Michael, with this uh, new series? What we thought was that there are a lot of people out there that don't have access to a person that's a master falconer, and they want to get started on their falconry journey. So we want to have a resource available so that they can pull some of this information out. And that way, when they do meet their master falconer, they're going to be really knowledgeable, and the Master Falconer is going to be, wow, yeah, I do want to sponsor this person. So we're going to have a whole series, Master Class Falconry. Hey, George, do you mind if I borrow your leg for a moment? Hmm? So George has not been manned down yet. As a matter of fact, we just got him back from California. Uh, he is one of my original falconry birds that I started with uh, in Missouri. He's a really, really good jack hawk. He can tackle a seven pound jackrabbit all by himself with no one's help. So what I'm doing right now is just letting him get a little bit of uh, uh, acclimation and let him know that I'm fixing to touch his legs. All right, so come on, just let me touch your leg. Put your leg down, it's okay, come here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be just right. How are you doing today? Can I see your leg? I mean, you got you got cuffs, but I just want to see if this will work. Can I see your leg? Can I see your leg? Way too big. His his legs are like the size of a wooden pencil. <laughs> Show you the difference between two male hair hogs. What's this you got here? This is a hole punch. It's I think it's for making belts, um, but I'm going to use it for making anklets. So I kind of would judge right here. I can kind of just eye where the center is at. And then I like to make a T so it's a lot easier to get the grommet side through. So the nice thing about doing that this way is you got, nice, you got nice round edges and so your leather won't split, crack, or tear. So, so now she's going to trim the leather down on one end so that it will slide through that hole. Yeah, I'm just gonna put some marks here that will help hold it in place. I'm gonna give it a nice. And if, if, if anyone did not want to smash your fingers with the hammer, um, Tandy Leather makes these with a piece welded onto it like that. And so you can hold it up here and, and hammer it. Here's my thoughts when I look at this is Will this pass through that and not wrinkle? And not wrinkle? Mm -hmm. It might have a little bit to it, but we'll put it through there. Just kind of get a look. And I might have made it too small. No, I think I made it too small. Morning. Hey, Jen. Hi. Bye, Jen. Oh, I'm going to go let the chickens out. Because I'm the chicken champion. <laughs> Hi, Dyson. 
This will not fit George because this T needs to be moved closer this way. So probably on the next one, we'll, we'll move the hole a little bit this way, move the T just a little bit this way, just to make it a little bit bigger. But this just fits Jet perfectly. So we're gonna go ahead and change his anklets out and she's gonna make another one. I'll go ahead and put your divots and stuff in there so you know exactly where to Perfect. cut things. Now, if people didn't know, there are special scissors made for cutting leather. And the only thing that will dull a leather scissor, a pair of leather scissors, is cutting paper. So if you've got good leather scissors, please do not cut paper. If I catch you cutting paper with my leather scissors, I'm gonna be mad. See how nice this cuts leather? So smooth and even. It's because we don't cut paper with their leather scissors. All right, back to the hole punching. And trying not to smash your fingers, be very careful. Okay, now we're ready to put the grommets on and we'll put some little stress relief marks on there. So you want stress relief marks on both sides? I usually only put them on the ankle side, on the, on the, the down side. Okay, we'll see. This, so this one's gonna go like this on this leg and then we'll do this one like this on this leg. So we'll do the bottom of this one and the bottom of this one, opposite of each other. So what are we talking about? <laughs> So, She's not being very good about um, explaining things, explaining things to our YouTube. Leave a thumbs down for Ashley. Oh no, <laughs> leave a thumbs up to encourage me to explain things better. <laughs> the ankle is going to be sitting on the bird like this and when they bait, it gives. Gotcha. And so it doesn't put as much stress on the bone. This part will stay stiff and this part will be um, fringed and I'll just do a couple for you real quick. I mean, all they are is just little bitty cuts, little bitty tiny cuts, not even an eighth of an inch long, okay? And so you see when the, when the bird baits, it, see how it gives? Yeah. And that way um, it doesn't cut into the bone and it doesn't press against the bone in such a way that it'll break the bone if they bait too much, but our birds don't bait much. A fresh, freshly chopped red tail is like a baiting machine. All right, so we want to set grommets. Hey, you know what time yes. it is, Michael? It's Ray's energy time. Oh. No, what time is it? Hammer time. It's hammer oh. time. Yeah, you like that one? <laughs> okay, yeah. Cool. Thanks, I appreciate the backup there. All right, so we're going to set the grommets. Tell me if I'm doing it right. So you put one grommet in this way, put one grommet in that way. You got a grommet setter. Yep. So somewhere in Wildlife Command Center, there is a pair of pliers that will do this for you. The base is already pre-curved to meet this curve. You just set that in there like that, and you set this on top. Um, this part of the grommet always goes flat part down, like that, and then your grommet setter sets right inside there. So that little nipple right there sets right inside. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel these edges back, and it's gonna hold that grommet in place. Grommet pliers you have a nice even fold over. When you hammer, you're gonna have bounce back. And so sometimes it takes a couple of times to get it just right. I shook my brain. And so what you're looking for, if you put that on a micro, you're micro. looking for a nice rollover. You want that middle part to be rolled over so that it holds that, um, that brass part in place and it won't come loose. Rolled over well? Yeah, beautiful. Jess grease is typically made with beeswax and lanolin and maybe some neat's foot, depends on who makes the Jess grease. This is straight mink oil, which isn't or, an organic product, but it doesn't have depth. It's like what you're getting is just mink oil, but it does make it more supple, makes it waterproof. It sets you up for success long-term. And you want to do that after the grommeting. You do not want to work with leather that has oil on it because it's hard to work with. So there, there is some debate within the falconry uh, community about using neat's foot oil, that it has some toxin in it, but such a small amount, and most of this is absorbed into the leather, uh, I don't participate in that argument. Like, I just don't participate in it. Like, 
Everyone can have their opinion. These are finished. Wow. Now the only thing we need to do is go put them on, is go cut Jets uh, Jesses off. We're gonna bring him inside here and put these new Jesses on him. If you if you really want to get the falconry community spun up, uh, handle a bird barehanded because they hate that. Like you should always use proper falconry gloves. His hands are as tough as leather. If it makes you feel better. All right, so we are going to change out his cuffs and his equipment, and you always do it one at a time. That way you always have a bird properly secured. Now it doesn't matter how long you've been doing falconry or how good your bird is, you should always have your bird secured, especially when you're gonna do something that's gonna make him bouncy and um, possibly move around a lot. Take our leather uh, scissors, and we're going to pull his leg a little bit like this so that he gets that out of his system because I don't want him doing that while I'm cutting. And then we're just going to cut the leather off just like that. So we've got our fringes here on the bottom. See our little fringes? And then this is the smooth side. And so I like to put the cuff on with the fringes down the smooth side if inside. You, if you use this one on that side, the open part will be towards the inside. It'll just have a cleaner look, if you know what I'm saying. I do know what you're saying. Awesome. If this was a passage red tail, we would have to wrap this bird up in a towel, which is called casting a bird. So we've got our um, tabs on. Tabs are all the way through. It moves up and down a little bit. We got the fringes down here. So that's going to hit against his ankle and open up whenever needed and we will be able to put the just right through here, put it through your swivel, and then you pull the end of your leash back through so that the end of the swivel comes back. And then you've got him secure like that. And then we'll just tie him off. So again, I want to desensitize his foot a little bit so that he understands I'm working on it. That way when I put the scissors up in here and cut the old Jess off, he doesn't do that. pull his foot and I cut his leg off. Because you don't want to cut your bird's leg off. Bad things happen when you cut their legs off. If your bird is real footy, you're going to be bleeding by now. Oops, I did it wrong. The band needs to be on top of the anklet, not below it, because if you leave it like that, the band is going to dig into the top of the, the foot right here. But anyway, that band, which is a federal ID band, it's a permanent band on this bird. It shows that he's a captive bred Harris Hawk, and that is his federal ID number. Uh, it needs to ride on top of the, uh, the cuff. That way it doesn't bind against the top of his ankle there. When he's jumping around twisting, this the swivel will swivel so that the leash will not get all tangled up. However, it's a Harris Hawk and throughout the day things happen. That's why we got to check on him multiple times a day to make sure that he's okay. All right, come on, let's go. Let's go back outside. Well, actually, I'll weigh you while I got you here. All of this that we've done has been incredibly good, but I have to admit that I made a mistake besides putting the one cuff on wrong. Uh, I didn't draw out a template on a piece of paper or anything, so she's going to have to draw it by hand again. It can be done. All right. No problem, no. If that's the worst thing I've done today, today's going to be a great day. What are you going to do differently this time? I'm going to make these a little bit bigger since the last ones were a little smaller than anticipated. So it was okay, though. They fit Jet. These are gonna have to fit George, and he's got a little bit bigger tarsus. So I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger. Sorry about your ears. Hey, um, can y'all finish this on George while I run go get some black twine? Yeah. Yeah? I'm so y'all can just finish that. So it's gonna uh, take me like 35 minutes to get there and back. I've got black. Uh, upholstery too string? little hmm. yeah way too little okay it needs yeah. to be thick it, it needs oh, to be yeah. it needs to be this thickness 
This is the perfect thickness, but I don't want to use pink because if you fly in a cast, the other birds will be pecking at its tail, thinking okay. this is something to eat. All right, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Let me turn my pack. I'm gonna turn my pack off. Can I turn my pack off? Yeah, yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Just put the inklets on the unmanned bird. No problem. No problem. We'll see if I come out on scarred. We're officially unsupervised. Oh boy. <laughs> So I noticed you did grommets without the tees first. So are we going to be doing a fitting or something? So I did it before I put the tees in because I want to get the tee as close to the grommet as possible this time because I don't want these to be too small, but they're going to be perfect. And so we have to go further back to the grommets because his leg is larger? Because his leg is larger, yeah. I want to make it as close to the grommet. That way, the where the leather will go back through itself, the closest I can, the closer I can get it to the grommet, the better, the bigger it's going to be. Yeah. Hello. I don't want to hammer while she's talking on the phone. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm gonna make these really close to the grommet on this side. Too. I always put my tools back where I get them out from because I'm very unorganized, and I will lose them otherwise. We meeking them? We were gonna mink them and then they're gonna fit beautifully. And then we'll get George. We'll get George. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna love us. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, hey buddy, we're gonna bug you again. I know. So far great. So far, so good. Oh, sorry, buddy. Not going back on there. Wow, professional. <laughs> Take about, notes, Michael. About to be professional. <laughs> yeah. So these are his terrible anklets right now. Yeah, these are a little, a little sad looking. They don't look oiled. No. pissing you off aren't I I'm so sorry you gotta let us know when you get footed really bad okay I will be like ah son of a monkey please don't bite me yay you can put your foot back on right now look at that looking good I wanted to do the other one like that too just bye George like I'm going to poop in your general direction. Yeah, probably right at my face. Wow, look how good the new one looks. Yeah, it does look good, doesn't it? Not gonna name any names, but wow. That must be a little easier. Back off, lady. Oh no. Back off. Don't you, don't, no, you do it, don't do it. Well, sir. <laughs> I've learned that birds will do a lot of intimidation, but for the most part, they're not really looking to hurt you. No. They just want to get away from you. Yeah, they just sort of like, don't touch me. Don't even look at me unless you have food to give me. Leave in the comments. We'll actually get her first dishes with the Wildlife Command Center today. My first dishes? Stitches. Oh. <laughs> It's like I'm washing dishes. <laughs> uh, I got a little bit of a little scrape there and a little scrape there. Oh, and a little scrape there, but it would not be the first time. I had little boo-boos. All right, way to go, George. Right on time. Dun, 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 dun. The best way to get other people to do all your work is leave. <laughs> We're going to be able to make another hawking video. How to make the world's best squirrel beating stick for squirrel hawking. Great. Our intention is to bring you all the small pieces, all the small details, so that you can step by step be able to accomplish some of these tasks prior to approaching a master falconer and asking them to apprentice you. The more you know, the better your chances are they're going to say yes. 
So follow us, Masterclass Falconry, and we will teach you everything we know, and the things we don't know, we'll read it in a book. He needs a coping. Go, let's see, let's, let's go ahead and cope him, since we're here. He'll love that. I mean, since we're being so mean to him, we might as well do that too, right? We will put, we will put a, uh, hold that. We will put a, a hood on him for that. There's a bird behind my desk. Yeah, normal office environment. Always something different. 